On Tuesday, December 3rd, the voters in the Ellenville Central School District will be asked to weigh in on a capital project proposal to provide key improvements to our schools. After consulting with district architects and construction managers, the Ellenville Board of Education has eliminated almost $9 million of proposed updates to focus on areas you, the community, identified as priorities. The new reduced project cost is just under $20 million, showing a 30% reduction in cost and cutting the impact to the taxpayers nearly in half. Of course, last year we were disappointed that the referendum went down, but the information we got from the exit polls were key. And we are listening to our constituents. We are listening to the people that are sharing information with us, and we're reprioritizing the things that are really what I call nuts and bolts here. Along with reducing overall cost, this capital project proposal focuses on securing our buildings, replacing end-of-life infrastructure such as roofs, masonry, and plumbing, and addressing overcrowding in student areas. When you talk about going back and building the project and, and, and the board taking it seriously and really getting down to sharpening their pencils, that's what this board did. We, we hit on a lot of key points that the taxpayers wanted to see. Security, they said, was overwhelming, so we kept the security pieces of it um, intact. One way to reduce potential threats in our school is to limit building access. Slowing an intruder's ability to access the school can minimize the severity of bad intentions. This includes not only redesigning entryways to provide separate locked areas to screen visitors, but also replacing old windows and doors. Safety is always a priority within the school district, so replacing infrastructure that has reached its end of life will be performed. It's infrastructure such as leaking roofs, old plumbing and sanitary systems, and crumbling masonry. As you update the roofs, what happens is, is that you increase the R value and that increases the snow load, so you have to increase the steel support underneath the roofs. And we are taking care of some uh, windows and doors that are leaking, um, some electrical issues, this retaining wall that we're standing on right now that was built when the middle school and this part of the elementary school were built in 1996. If you look at the retaining wall, there are sections of erosion. There are parts of it that are actually dipping. There's lots of cracks in the sidewalks that we've had to repair over the years. And then if you look at it from far away, the retaining wall is actually tipping. Legally required Americans with disabilities upgrades to make our buildings accessible will be included. Many of the updates to infrastructure will also improve energy efficiency, generating operational savings in the long run. The final area identified by community as a priority is addressing overcrowding in specific student areas. It's a lot of hustle and bustle trying to get them through the line and when they get here, we try to get them to eat so we can move them out so we can get the next crew in. So it's a constant motion. Fifth graders eat lunch at 1040, which is a little early for the older children to eat because, and, and some don't eat. And we try to encourage them, please get something. You have a whole day to go through with no food. We needed uh, space for our elementary um, cafeteria and for our library so that the children can have the resources and technology that they need to compete in today's market. The biggest problem with the library is the outdated space and the inability to utilize the space in a, re in a way that would really um, support our curriculum. So a maker space is about helping them to learn how to break down ideas and then create with that and you give them a space where they can work with things like the robots or connecting circuits and stuff. But I have to pack everything away and put everything out and I have to use the space as I can. There's a bunch of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, everyone, even sometimes middle schoolers come up here and in order to have 25 plus people in this room, you're shoulder to shoulder with everyone constantly. Like right over here we could have like three groups and each group is like consists of four to five people. So it's just full over here by itself. I have a group of five people and we're in advanced TV and radio. So we kind of sit in the back room more away from everyone because we can't, in order for us to be able to hear each other even, we have to sit in the back room where we're secluded from everyone else, where 
then we can hear each other, but we're in such a small space. So we're like nose to nose with everyone. If we try to come out here, it's a hassle to try to even get through the little hallway that we have to get out the door. The undersized elementary school cafeteria and cramped high school television radio studio will be expanded to reduce that overcrowding. The original 1955 elementary school library will be converted into learning spaces for our expanding population of special needs students and a new 2,500 square foot library edition that supports technology use will be built. At the high school auditorium, missing and broken seating, 30-year-old non-functioning lighting and the inadequate sound system will be replaced and the library will be updated to support modern instructional practices. Listen, we are on a technology train, and if we don't get on it and stay on it, it's gonna run us over. So we have to invest in our, our most precious resource here, and, and that is our children. Uh, the children of this district uh, deserve to have the best quality education that we can provide. Aside from ensuring our students have safe schools that are well cared for and have adequate space for learning, reducing cost was a high priority. So the district will receive 70% state aid reimbursement on qualifying work and $500,000 from the district's capital fund will be applied to offset non-aidable work. So a lot of the items that are not aidable we're actually paying for out of monies that we have in-house. We won't have to borrow to um, cover those costs. So the question remains, what will it cost you, the voters? If your home is valued at $100,000 or assessed at $100,000, the cost annually, if we get the most aid, it'll be $54.23. The minimum amount of aid, it'll be $65.67 a year. Why is this capital project a necessity now? The last thing we want is to be back into a situation where the building um, really goes into such disrepair that we're not talking about you know, re uh, replacing and modifying age infrastructure. We're talking about a full-blown replacement like we had when the building was condemned years ago. It's like having a house. If you don't reinvest in your house, the house is gonna fall down. It's gonna cost you twice as much. A lot of these students, they know they can come here in the, in the winter time when it's cold to get warm. And they know in the summertime when it's hot out, they can come here to get cool. So this school is a lifeline to this community and these students. And we have to take care of these students. Please remember to vote. Polls will be open on Tuesday, December 3rd from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the Ellenville High School Media Center. For more information, visit us online at www.ecs.k12.ny.us or email us at capitalproject at ecs.k12.ny.us. District administrators will also be available at many upcoming school events, so stop by and see us.